Good morning. I'm Kevin Gotham, pastor here at First Baptist Church of Bruton, Alabama. We welcome you to our worship service and the opportunity that we have to come celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to show you Bell Chapel just from a different perspective. Behind me, you can see how we have this chair spaced out. These chairs are about six foot apart, and it is that social distancing. So we're gonna be very creative when we start church back in the future, uh, but I just wanted you to see this impression about being spaced out and how serious we're gonna take that as a church. Today's Mother's Day. We celebrate our moms, but most importantly, we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. As we worship today, and let's keep that in mind, we're going to have a special time of just looking at, at what God is doing in people's lives, but also how important it is for mothers and their job. I mean, mothers right now are so taxed and so overwhelmed that it's just amazing what they do. Uh, a lot of mothers are working full time and taking care of their kids full time, and, and it's hard, and we do want to appreciate and, and uh, say thank you to our mothers and know how special they are. So today in our worship service, we're going to highlight the mother and how important mothers are. Uh, one of the key scriptures that I think of when it comes to mother and, and what she teaches her children is, is really a scripture that comes from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul is writing a letter to Timothy. And as he's writing this letter, and really as a letter of encouragement, in verse 14 and 15, he says some very powerful things. He says in verse 14, But as for you, continuing in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you've learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, in Christ Jesus. What I believe this scripture is uh, saying here, Paul is telling Timothy, he goes, you've been taught the word of God since you were a child. And I believe that in another letter, he talks about his mother and grandmother and what an influence they had on his life. And in our sermon today, we're going to look at that, that influence of mothers to have uh, in their children's lives. Mark's going to be sharing the sermon with us. He's going to be preaching from this scripture and a, and a couple of other scriptures. Uh, but God, I want us to celebrate the mo our mothers. I know it's a different Mother's Day than what we normally have. On Mother's Day, we come and support our mother, and I want you to encourage you to do that. But we also normally have Baby Dedication Day. We're not able to do that, and several people have asked me about Baby Dedication. We're going to do that in the future when we're able to all come back together. Uh, but the reality is, right now, we're not able to do that, but we will do that. Again, it's a different Mother's Day. It's a different time, but we're here to worship our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate our mothers. Let's bow together in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for your grace and how you work in our lives. And Lord, right now, my prayer is that this service will glorify you in every way. The songs that are sung, the scripture that's read, the sermon that's preached, may you be glorified completely. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This being our Mother's Day worship service, we've chosen songs today that every age worshiper can sing from the youngest singer to the most experienced. We begin with a simple prayer, today more appropriate for us than ever, that says, Come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. What a great prayer for us to share together in song. And then we'll sing one of the simplest but most loved melodies ever written with words that capture God's nature as our loving creator. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. And then something different for us in this time of separation. Head and I are going to play an arrangement of two hymns. This is my father's world, and he's got the whole world in his hands. I encourage you to sing along in this big national piece. You can choose the lyrics that you sing. Uh, wind and rain, the whole world, tiny little baby, you and your brother, or perhaps today, he's got father and mother in his hands. And I really encourage you to let the kids lead that song. Join us as we worship today. Yeah. 
Well, a very good day to you, church, and a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there as we look to recognize and to celebrate our moms. Uh, I can't help but think about my own mom and, and the role that she has had in my life and raising me and uh, being a big influence uh, in my life. One of the, uh, she's probably going to be mad about uh, me telling this story. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the, when I think about uh, my mother and I, this is without doubt the, the most classic story that always comes up that is just, we tell it all the time in our family. Um, I, was, I was in the third grade, I believe. We were living in Montgomery at the time, and I was a, I was a typical third grade boy, uh, which I means I, I got into a lot of trouble a good bit of the time in school. Nothing too serious or bad like that, but you know, I just was a uh, I was a bit rowdy and acted up, and so I had gotten in trouble at school. And to me, <clears throat> and to me, it was not something that was major or big or that I felt like was a big deal. But the school that I attended took uh, acting up and, and, and discipline very seriously. And so I, I got in trouble with some friends, and they sent us to the office, and they called our parents. And they actually called my dad. And keep in mind, both... Both my parents are educators, and so what that means is that when they called my dad, that they had to get him, um, they actually had to get him out of the classroom to come up to the office to answer that phone call. So I knew that I was in trouble. Like, I, I know that I'm in big trouble because they've actually had to call my dad at the classroom uh, to tell him that I'm in trouble. And so I knew it. I knew I was in big trouble. I knew when I got home that it, it just it wasn't going to be fun. Um, but the end of the day comes, and my mo mom is coming to pick me up. And I'm standing there with some other friends, and, and we're hanging out, and we're, we're kind of chatting and stuff. And I don't know quite how the conversation went, but uh, evidently my mom alerted to the fact that she was like, hey, would, would you want them to come over and hang out for the, for the afternoon? And I knew what the right answer was. I, I really did. I knew what the correct answer was. I knew that I was in trouble. I knew that my dad knew that I was in trouble. But right in that moment, I, I realized my mom doesn't know that I'm in trouble she has no idea that I've got in trouble at school. And like I said, I knew what the right answer was, but I did it anyway, and I said, sure, Mom, I'd love for them to come over today. And so we worked it out, and they came over, and we went back to our house, and we were out in the front yard playing wiffle ball and hanging out and having a great time. Well, once we got home at some point, whether he was able to get free from work or whatnot, or my dad had left a voicemail, he gets word to my mom that I got in trouble at school and that I am to when I get home, just go straight to my room and wait for him, then I, I'm in big trouble. Um, so my mom was not happy that I had lied to her and that I had deceived her. And so she comes outside where we're playing wiffle ball and she grabs the nearest thing, which happens to be the wiffle ball bat, and she proceeds to uh, spank me with the wiffle ball bat. And um, it was one of those wiffle ball bats that, that was kind of, it, it didn't hurt at all. I didn't feel any, any pain, but just the embarrassment of being uh, whipped with a wiffle ball bat in front of your friends was, uh, was, was pretty funny. Uh, it's one of those things. If you knew me as a third grade boy, then you knew that I, I deserved to be whipped with wiffle ball bat. Uh, I, I full heartedly deserved it, but I know my mom's probably going to be upset about me telling that story, especially on Mother's Day, uh, but it's a classic story, and I thank my mom for all that she's done in my life, even in the times when I needed to be disciplined and that I needed to be in trouble, uh, but my mom's a, a loving and kind person, and we do just want to uh, recognize and celebrate our mothers on this uh, special day, on this Mother's Day. Um, Brother Kevin has thankfully allowed me to uh, preach the word this morning. He is... Um, He's off with his family on this Mother's Day weekend, and so I thank him for allowing me the opportunity to speak the word and preach the word to you this morning. So if you have your Bibles, Brother Kevin already read the verses of where we'll be at, which is mainly we'll be in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, or 14 and 15. Uh, but I want to start in Proverbs 13, verse 22. I'll read that briefly. You don't have to turn there. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. Um, don't get caught up with it being Mother's Day by that saying a good man. But I, I really want to focus in on that, an inheritance to his children's children. 
And what I really want to speak about this morning is passing on a spiritual inheritance to our children's children. And while this message, I'm going to give us a challenge uh, predominantly, obviously, to our mothers on Mother's Day. But I'll be honest, this does not just uh, only apply to them. This also applies to parents as a whole, mother and father. This applies to grandparents. This really applies to us as the church as a whole with our children and our students and the uh, children's ministry and the youth ministry. But if you have your Bibles, if you're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, I'm going to reread those again for us. Um, and this is what Paul writing to Timothy says in verse 14. But as for you, continue what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. What Paul is referencing here and what Paul is talking about is actually something that he said in chapter 1, verse 5. And what he said in verse 5 of chapter 1, he says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. What Paul is talking about here is he's seeing Timothy. He's, he's really taking on uh, being a spiritual father to Timothy. But what he's saying is you've been raised up. You've been built on the word of God. You've been built on certain things because your grandmother and your mother were faithful to teach you the word. And so I have four things that I want to walk through very briefly this morning and really challenge us, like I said, to you as mothers, but really us, us as whole as either parents or grandparents or the church. The first thing that we see that I want to point out for us is obviously this is from childhood, you've been acquainted with the sacred writings. And this is my first kind of challenge to you, my first point that I want to make to you mothers. Raise your kids up in the word of God. Raise them up in the Word of God. Teaching the Word of God is the most important thing that we can do. And this is what Paul did. Paul has taken on Timothy as really a spiritual son, and he's a spiritual father. But he is commending, he's saying, because of the work that your grandmother and your mother have done in raising you in the Word of God, like you've already been acquainted with the Scriptures. And that sacred writing is really referring to the Old Testament. It's obviously the New Testament hasn't been written yet. But we have to teach our kids the Word of God. We have to teach them. This is so vitally important to teach them that it comes before anything else. If we raise our kids to, to be able to, to hit a volleyball or to pitch a softball or to throw a football or to shoot a basketball or how to uh, fill out resumes and apply to college and all that stuff, well, those are good things. If we teach them that, but we don't teach them the word of God, we fail. We have to teach the word. This is the most important thing that we can do for you as mothers. I know that I'm not a parent, but I'm telling you, the most important thing that you can do is to teach the word, to raise them up that they would be acquainted with the word of God. Why? Tim, uh, Paul answers it right here. He says, you've been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus talks about this in John chapter 5, verse 39. He says the word of God, scripture points to him. And this is what Paul is saying here, is the scriptures point to Jesus and it leads to salvation. It makes you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. We teach the word of God. The reason that we raise our kids up is because the word of God points to Jesus and that they would come to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's the main thing. That is the whole thing. That is the main point. Nothing else matters to see our children come to faith in Christ Jesus. That is, should be the number one goal always and forever is to see our children come to faith in Christ Jesus. And it comes through faithfully teaching them and raising them up in the word of God. Once again, if we've raised our students to be super successful in high school and to be super successful in sports and to be super successful at, at, at school and they go off and they're super successful at college and they get that great job and they've gotten everything in the world that they've wanted and we're, they're happy and they've got the perfect job, they're making all the money, but we haven't taught them the word of God and they haven't come to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, then what does it matter? They will take all the things that they've got, all the success, all the earnings, all the money, everything that they could possibly want that would give them a happy life, and it will literally turn to ash in their hands before Jesus. All that matters is that they would come to faith in Christ Jesus. That is the primary and like sole goal for you as mothers and for parents and for grandparents is to see our kids come to faith in Christ Jesus, to come to the recognition through the word of God 
like Brother Kevin has been preaching on Sunday mornings through, uh, through really the substitution uh, sermon series that he's doing, but really through Romans, that we are sinners before God, that we are sinners and that we have no righteousness on us, that we cannot save ourselves, but Christ died on the cross for us, taking our place, that God demonstrated his love, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, and that we put our faith in that, that we would have salvation. That is the main goal. That is the main, if you even want to call it a challenge, I wouldn't even call it a challenge because it's a goal of what we want to see, is that we want to see our kids. And I know that the fear might be, well, if Mark, if I push this down their throats, if I just, if I just do this, if I shove this in their face all the time at home, they're going to walk away from me. But what we're talking about here is, is it's things of eternity. It is their very soul that is at stake. And so just dropping them off with me for an hour, dropping them off at the church for an hour is not going to cut it. We have to teach the word of God that can save their souls in the home. We have to raise them up so that they would be acquainted with the scriptures. Third point that I'd like to make is that we see that those two things go hand in hand, teaching the word of God and it pointing to Jesus through salvation in Christ Jesus. Those two things go together. That's the main focus of what we want to do. We want to teach the word so that they can come to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. But another thing that we see off of that of what Paul is teaching Timothy and what he really talks about in his first letter as well is the guarding against false teachers. And what we see is that when we raise our children up in the scripture, in the sacred writings, is that they come to, like, they have what is, will make them wise to salvation through Christ Jesus because all of scripture points to Jesus. But what Paul is also able to say to Timothy is because you've been acquainted, because of what your grandmother and your mother have done for you, you are also able to have been raised up in the word of God to be on guard against false teachers. And so we have to ask the question, are we raising our kids up, teaching them the word of God so that they would recognize recognize when the enemy is lying to them or would they recognize false teaching or false teachers or when the enemy shoots his fiery arrows at them they would recognize it because they've been studying the word of God they've been raised in the word of God and so they would recognize false teaching Paul is able to tell Timothy he says you've been raised in this and so you're on guard against this and he's warning them against them because we know we know that our students are going to hear false teaching False teachers are out there. False idols are out there. They are seeing it now in middle school and high school. They'll go off to college in here and off into the workforce, and they will have this throughout their life. Are they able to combat it because they have the word of God, and they've been brought up with it, they've been acquainted with it, so that they know when they hear something, they're like, whoa, that's, that's not what God's word says. That's opposite of what God's word says. Are they raised and acquainted with it enough that they would recognize false teaching and be on guard against false teaching because they will face false teaching. The last thing that I'll point out for us this morning is this. We see that spiritual inheritance that I talked about. You know, we want to see the spiritual inheritance passed on from our children to our children's children. And we literally see this here in the scripture. What is Timothy doing? Paul is writing to Timothy, uh, commending him, recognizing him that he is um, He is the leader and the pastor of the church of Ephesus at this time. And the gospel is going forth because of Timothy and him preaching the word. And Paul is going to write to him and tell him, continue to preach the word of God. All of the word of God is profitable for teaching. It's been breathed out by God. That's the very next verse in verse 16. And he's coming to do that. Uh, and we're seeing that the church of Ephesus, like Timothy is there and people are coming to know uh, Jesus as Lord. And they're bowing the knee to King Jesus because of Timothy. But why? Because a mother was faithful to teach her daughter the word of God and to raise her up in the word of God. So then her daughter, when she has a son, would be faithful and lead up her son in the word of God. And we're now seeing Timothy come and lead people to Christ at the church of Ephesus because of one mother being faithful to the word of God. We're literally seeing it passed down to the children's children because the grandmother was faithful to teach the word of God. And then the mother was faithful to teach the word of God. And her son came to faith and salvation in Christ Jesus. And he is now able to go out and he's to go and to teach the word of God. And we're seeing the church of Ephesus grow and people come to know, come to salvation in Jesus because of what one mother did and her faithfulness to God. And this is it right here. The greatest mission field that you will have mothers is the home. It's going to be the home. It's going to be the place where your children are at to raise them up to be passionate Jesus followers. That is the greatest mission field and that they would go forth and that they would come to salvation in Christ Jesus and that if they were Lord willing to able to have kids, they would continue to pass that down from generation to generation and that we would see disciple making like anything other seen in the world through the home. It starts at the house teaching the word of God. 
to be faithful to teach the word of God. I know it's difficult. I know that's hard. I know that work is overbearing at times and it's tough and it's difficult and we just want to go home and we just want to sit down and do nothing or watch Netflix or go our own separate ways. And there's certainly a time and place to relax and have fun. But are we teaching the word of God? Are we teaching them that? Are we raising them up to be acquainted with the scriptures because it makes them wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus? Is that what we're doing? That we would see disciple making happen like no other through the homes and through our children and then through their children's children and their children's children as we see the faith that happened in one mother passed down all the way to Timothy. Would we see that happen here? It takes one person being faithful to teach the word of God. Is that us? Are we doing that? Are we honestly saying, I'm being faithful to teach the word of God? Let me close this in prayer. Father, we do just thank you today. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love, Father. We thank you for just uh, all of our mothers out there who have played a part in our lives and an influential part in our lives who have helped uh, raise us and make us into the people that we are today, Father. But I do challenge really our mothers and even going forth into our fathers as the primary leaders of the household and our grandparents and uh, the church as a whole. Are we being faithful to teach the word of God? We've seen such a great example in your scripture, Father, through Lois and Eunice and on to Timothy, Father. Would that we would replicate it. Would that we would do this, that we would be faithful so that we would see a spiritual inheritance passed down to our children's children, Father. Because that's it. That's what we want to see. That's the primary thing. More than we want to see children be successful, more than we want to see them get that job or to get whatever it is that makes them happy, Father, that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. These are eternal matters. These are a, a battle for their very soul, Father. Would that we would take it seriously. I pray this on your holy and most proper name. Amen.